work that I am an Israelite and my soul resonated with that and I knew from that moment. First of all, love the head wrap, okay? If anybody ever gets into the business of making fashion for Hebrew Israelite women, please uh, tag me and they should definitely seek your advice. So love that. And also I appreciate you responding. Um, I do want to make clear for any onlookers that um, I personally, and I believe this is true for uh, this young lady, um, this isn't an argument. This is a discussion. This is, I believe that um, we all are seeking the purest form of truth. And I believe the two camps, uh, me coming out of Christianity, whom now I would call myself a believer, I believe that Jesus is Lord, um, have found out that I am a true Hebrew, uh, which was revealed to me through the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. And I have stepped out on faith to believe it's true. And then God is starting to send me information to confirm this belief. <clears throat> With that being said, um, God has had me on a, a, spe a special journey as well um, because as I was reading the Old Testament, <clears throat> excuse me, God has had me to read it as if um, I was reading about my ancestors. I learned how to do that through uh, David Pawson, who when I was coming out of uh, the understanding that I was under, God sent me a man named David Pawson. So, um, I believe most of our journeys to truth will kind of be similar because I believe the goal is for us to have unity in the spirit. I believe the goal is for us to be one in the spirit because there's only one truth. And there are many um, different teachings and theologies and things of that sort that have caused division amongst us. But <clears throat> excuse me, I believe that God wants us to find unity in the spirit because there is only one truth. So with that being said, um, I want to just address a couple of things or, or actually bring up to have a dialogue. And, and this could stop here. Um, I had done a couple of videos on YouTube and one of the videos I said I was going to do for some of the people that had comments and questions was Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Um, which you brought up. So I find it ironic because I wasn't even going to respond because I was just, you know, whatever. Um, but because you brought this up, I did tell someone that I was going to comment. So I'm going to respond uh, about Matthew 5 and 17. Uh, we are talking about the law. And just to be clear that we are on the same page in terms of if we have a solid understanding of what's happening here. Um, uh, I am at, I take the position that uh, we are no longer under the law as it is written uh, in, in Exodus and, and has Moses as the 613 laws are written. I take the position that we are not, not under the law anymore because uh, Yeshua, Jesus, has fulfilled the law upon his death and resurrection. And I seek to prove that to, to this particular moment. Um, and I think if I'm hearing you correctly and, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, so anywhere I'm wrong, you can type at the bottom, you can text me, you can call me, you can yell at me, whatever. Um, I believe that you're taking the position that we are still under the law. I, I, I could be wrong. So, so you can make that clear and that we are still to follow the law as is. And you are even saying that God has you under a special um, understanding that if you do mess up, then you, because you're under higher standard, because you know better, uh, there is penalties associated with your life. And I, I respect that. I, 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 you know, I respect what you're saying. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to start off by reading, uh, Matthew 5 and 17. So Matthew 5, 17 through 18, and this is Jesus speaking, by the way. So, uh, I put all my hope and trust in Jesus, by the way. I personally don't uh, follow Paul, and I don't think most believers do. Um, so I'd like to make that clear for the record, because I'm sure some people would be like, hey. Uh, but but most of the 
New Testament is written by Paul. So, you know, if we take what Paul set out, we, we really don't have much of a New Testament. Um, but anyway, um, okay, so uh, it says, don't misunderstand why I have come. It isn't to cancel the laws of Moses and the writings of the prophets. No, I came to fulfill them and to make them all come true. With all the earnestness I have to say, every law in the book will continue until its purpose is achieved. And so if anyone breaks the last commandment and teaching others to, he shall be the least in the kingdom of heaven. But those who teach God's laws and obey them shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your goodness is greater than that of the Pharisees and other Jewish leaders, you can't get into the kingdom of heaven at all. Under the laws of Moses, the rule was if you murder, you must die. But I have added to the rule and tell you that if you are only angry even on your even I'm sorry um only angry even your own home you are in danger of judgment let me read that again i think i butchered that um so under the laws of moses the rule was if you murder you must die but i have added to that rule and tell you that you, that if you are only angry even in your own home you are in danger of judgment okay so I think we have to back up a little bit and really break down the scripture. And as you said, and I agree with you, um, there are 66 books in the Bible and we should take things book by book and read the entire book so as not to take things out of context. Now, anybody can take one scripture and make it as uh, as their own for anything they want to say anybody that has a message can pick out any scripture in the bible and and just say it's true because it says it in the bible but we have to keep things in context right and so i think i agree with you i think that is very important so when jesus says no i came to fulfill them talking about the law and to make them all come true right uh, with all the earnestness I have to say, every law in the book will continue until its purpose is achieved. So I present to you that the purpose of the law has been achieved. It has been fulfilled because of Jesus' death and resurrection. And when we talk about these 613 laws, um, I believe that if you break one, you've broken all. And let me just double check on that real quick. Yes. Yeah, so in James 2 and 10, it says, And the person who keeps every law of God but makes one little slip is just as guilty as the person who has broken every law there is. And we know that James was Jesus's brother, just for anybody that uh, wanted to know. So back to Matthew 5 and 17. So, so. Jesus has fulfilled the law upon his death and resurrection. And we know that the law has uh and we know that the law has been re fulfilled because there are laws that are just aren't necessary anymore. One for example, uh they used to have a scapegoat that they would release for the people's sins. Yeshua is that scapegoat his death and resurrection means we no longer have to do the scapegoat thing right that's one uh two there's there's many but i'm just giving you some points circumcision uh when paul and peter had that huge discussion in galatia galatians about circumcision that circumcision isn't required to be a follower of christ uh that is no longer that that's another law that we have to toss out and then, uh, and of course, the sacrifices is a huge part of the 613 laws, which we no longer sacrifice because Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice, saying that we need to make sacrifices, saying that Jesus' death wasn't good enough. And then you put him back on the cross, you crucify him anew. But that's not true. We, knew that Je we know that Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. So I'm running out of time, so I'm going to have to do a part two. So if you want to come back for a part two, I will do that.
So this is part two of uh, we are no longer under the law because it has been fulfilled upon Jesus' death and resurrection. Uh, part one is the one uh, prior to this or will be after this, depending on how it gets uploaded in TikTok. And I will put this on both platforms on TikTok and YouTube. Um, so as I was in Matthew, I just read uh, Matthew uh, 5 and 17 through 18. And I had stated how... Um, you know, basically Jesus was saying that, no, uh, I can, I came to fulfill the law and that with all the earnestness I have, uh, I say every law in the book will continue until its purpose is achieved. And so I'm asking the question, um, there are 16 and 613 laws. Um, and a lot of them have already been achieved and fulfilled because of Jesus' death and resurrection. So how can one still continue to live under the law of Moses? If I'm misunderstanding something, please, please let me know. But it is impossible to keep the law now because things have already been achieved and fulfilled upon Jesus' death and resurrection. How do we know that? Is because one, uh, when we talk about the scapegoat uh, that was released, um, I believe it was during Passover, but these are the things that I am new to, so, you know, forgive me. Um, they re or uh, not, uh, uh, There's a ceremony where they release the scapegoat for the sins of the people. And no longer do we have to do that because Jesus' death um, Jesus was the scapegoat, the ultimate scapegoat, the ultimate sacrifice. His blood was the, 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 no longer do we need to do this anymore. And so that's a part of the law that is no longer valid. So that's at least one, but there are many. Then we have to address all the laws of the sacrifices when you had to sacrifice a pigeon for this or sacrifice a dove for this or sacrifice a goat for this and that and this. No longer do we have to do that because Jesus already is the ultimate sacrifice. So uh, that means that no longer, there's a huge chunk of the laws that we no longer uh, have to do. And are, so this law is is disintegrating and and I don't mean that in in a negative way I mean that it has already come true it has been fulfilled because of Jesus death and resurrection and so uh you know even Paul talks about this is that you know the law was good but Satan used the law against us to accuse us um, of, of, so when we break the law, when you break the law, Satan can say, Oh, look at them. They broke the law. So Satan used that against us, but the law was good. So we needed someone to save us from the law. This is why Jesus came to save us from sins. A sinner by definition was anyone who broke the law. So Jesus, that's why Jesus came to the sinner's people who couldn't keep the law because side note nobody can so he can save them from themselves and so that is why he died on the cross he's the ultimate sacrifice so no longer are we we are now entering we have merged into the new covenant so there's the law has been fulfilled and so now so you ask well what do we do now what what how do we you know, how do we, what do we just do whatever we want? Lawlessness? No, that's, no, that's not it. So now we are to be led by the Holy Spirit that indwells us. The law is written on our hearts to the believers. I believe someone else pointed this out on you on YouTube. So the law is written on our hearts and it is when you, when you are baptized by the Holy Spirit, and you have Christ and dwelling in you, then now you are able to make sound judgment and you should be led by the Holy Spirit. And I promise you, this will eliminate so many issues that we have. 
if we are led by the Holy Spirit, if we seek to hear the voice of God, I promise you it will eliminate so many problems. So that means when somebody uh, is on a different level than you, we can extend grace to them as long as they're being led by the Holy Spirit. For example, if someone is still listening to certain types of music, then but but they have been baptized by the Holy Spirit, they're reading their word, they're l- learning and growing, but they haven't gotten to the level where they want to release a lot of those songs that they listen to. They are still in alliance with, with, with God and where he is leading their life. Why? Because they're being led by the Holy Spirit and they're just not on your so-called level yet. Now, you, we, everyone has things that we need to work on. And so that is why we extend grace to one another and, and seek to find unity in the spirit and to be led by the Holy Spirit. Another point, uh, which, which is, is when we talk about people who eat different types of so-called defiled meats, right? Or defiled food. And we look at Peter um, and Acts 10, 9 through 16, uh, God is speaking to Peter, right? And basically it says the next day as they were nearing the city, Peter went up on the flat roof of his house to pray. It was noon and he was hungry, but while lunch was being prepared, he fell into a trance. And by the way, uh, this is for people who like, this is when the Bible starts talking about visions and uh, portals and things like that, that people may not know how to point out to you. But if he's in a trance, he's, he's going into a vision. Um, and he actually sees this. Okay. He saw the sky open and a great canvas sheet, uh, suspended by its four corners, almost like a movie screen, kind of like a big movie screen for today, which is interesting, uh, settled to the ground and the sheets and the sheet were all sorts of animals, uh, snakes and birds and for and forbidden to the Jews for food. I just butchered that scripture. So, uh, you know, read it for yourself. <laughs> but uh, it says he saw the sky open in a great canvas sheet suspended by its four corners. I wonder if I'm, I'm misunderstanding that in terms of like, was it just like a flat sheet? But you read it for yourself. Settled to the ground and the sh- and the sheet in the sheet were all sorts of animals, snakes, and birds for, forbidden to the Jews for food. Then the voice said to him, go kill and eat any, any of them you wish. And Peter said, never, Lord, Peter declared, I have never in all my life eaten such creatures, for they are forbidden by our Jewish laws. And the voice spoke again, don't co- uh, contradict God. If he says something is okay, if he says something is kosher, then it is. So basically, if, and I think other translation says what God makes, what God makes, says is clean, it's clean, it's good for you to eat. And this is another example and point why we should be led by the Holy Spirit and all that we do as a believer in Christ. I promise you it will eliminate any of our issues. Um, I hope this helps uh, for anybody that is following this conversation. Um, I, I've done my best to try to articulate my understandings where I am up until this point. I pray that each and every one of us seek to be led by the Holy Spirit so that we can have clarity and our knowledge. Because I think at the end of the day, we all want the purest form of truth, right? Um, but we should be able to defend what we believe in, I, I assure you. So if anything is confusing to you or if you misunderstand or if you something I've said was true or something you don't believe in, then be able to back it up um, and do your due diligence. This is what it means to work out your salvation in fear and trembling. Um, take this time that we have on earth, put TikTok down for a little bit and study the word so that you can have a thorough understanding as to what it is that you believe in. God bless you. Appreciate you watching and um, hope to see you guys. Girl, I done put the bonnet on and I'm not taking it off to do another video. So here we are. And I'm sure y'all used to seeing me in my bonnet. So let's continue. So, um, so you said, um, it's always love. Appreciate that. Yes. Always love. Um, I understand that, uh, what you're saying, I guess a question I could ask is what is considered sin? I think by asking this, uh, first we can 
uh, come to common ground. So I'm smiling because I know the lawyer in you um, doesn't ask a question without first knowing the answer. So that's why I'm smiling. So um, I, I know that you are trying to get me to a point. So here's, here's what we're going to do. Um, so by definition, um, uh, a sinner, by definition, especially uh, as we're talking about in the times of when Jesus returned and all that good stuff is by definition, a sinner was anyone who broke the law, right? So when we look at it like that, I just did my eyebrows like really big. I was like, you see that? Sorry, I get distracted. Stay focused. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So a sinner was anyone who broke the law. So when we look at it from that perspective, Jesus came to the Israelites, to the Jews first, and then to the Gentiles because he was coming to save the people who couldn't keep the law because nobody could keep it. It was very difficult. We talked about Paul was, I believe Paul was, was one of the, I'm not going to say the only ones, but it's very difficult to keep that law. It was very, it is very difficult. And as I pointed out in James earlier, that if you break one law, you break them all. So God sent a savior to save us from ourselves, uh, to come to save sinners, by definition, a sinner is anyone who breaks the law. So, because nobody could keep it, and nobody can keep it today either. So, um, um, in Jesus coming to fulfill the law, and his because of his death and resurrection, which means now the law is fulfilled, it's not that we've done away with it, it's still good, the law is still good, but Jesus has fulfilled it. So, um, the scripture where it says, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who love God, who love God, who trust in Jesus, um, tells us that um, now because of the death that all that because of Jesus death, we are free, you know, we are good to go. And so Paul has the argument, because um, this is, I'm quoting him. Um, so does this mean that we uh, can go around and do it whatever we want? And Paul says, of course not. And I know you don't want me to quote Paul, but that is, that that is, of course not. That would be lawlessness. That would be um, crazy to do. And, and, and I have to be clear that this is talking to the person who has decided to make Jesus their Lord and Savior, who has been baptized by the Holy Spirit and now operating in and through the Holy Spirit. There is a difference. There is no, therefore, no condemnation for that individual, okay? And so if that individual uh, is seeking to continue this narrow path, and a lot of people will uh, disagree with me, but I believe that you are not saved until Jesus say, well done and good, my good and faithful servant, because I don't believe it's over until you finish, because in the Bible it says even the elect can be deceived. Um, so I believe that we are still on that narrow path and we have to finish our race, as Paul stated, uh, finish the race that we've started. And it's not over until Jesus says, well done, my good and faithful servant. So I don't believe in one save, always save. Uh, but back to this. So, uh, therefore, there is no condemnation for condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus that applies to that individual. And if you are operating like that, then again, like someone pointed out on YouTube, I have to give her a shout out, whoever wrote that, the law is written on our hearts. And so we won't do things that are contrary to God and the Holy Spirit because the spirit that is operating in and through us. So um, we still have different paths and we still are shedding different things off us, of, off of us as we continue to grow and we'll never be perfect um, because there's always something that we have to, that's why, that's why this walk is so beautiful because we always grow. And now if you aren't growing, if you're still stuck in sin cycles, something is amiss and you need to figure that out. And I'm not talking to you, of course, but to anyone that's coming across this video. So um, that is what I would say. Uh, if you ask me, like, what is a sin? It's anything that is against what someone who is filled with the Holy Spirit believes is wrong. So if you know that 
um, uh, that eating bacon is wrong for you, right? And because God put on your heart not to eat bacon. By the way, there's nothing wrong with eat, eating bacon, but I'm giving an example. Um, uh, it's however the spirit leads you because we are to be Holy Spirit led. So if God puts on your heart like, hey, you know, and he will say that to individuals. Um, I don't want you eating pork anymore. And that's why it's an individual path and walk. And then I agree with God. I say, okay, you know what, God, you know, I've been feeling that lately. I'm a, I, I'm, I'm, I'd like to obey you in this and I won't eat pork anymore. But then I go and have a breakdown and have a pork chop with some, um, smothered gravy and onions. Don't get me started with a little bit of rice. Okay. And if I do that, then I have broken a law for that has been that, that God has asked me not to do because I'm on an individual journey. And then there's something that, um, can, I can be held accountable. I'm not saying that I would, and I'm not saying that I can't repent and say, God, I know we had this conversation. Um, but I ask you to grant me repentance. Now, with that being said, um, that blows, it's a wide spectrum now because, um, so what are you saying, Chandra, if I, uh, take somebody out and, 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 you know, they're no longer in the land of living, but what if I don't think that's a sin? Are you telling me that's not right? And no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we are to be Holy Spirit led and we have to remember that Moses took somebody out and God also used him to lead a nation. And there was a lot of murders back in the day. I'm not saying this is not your license to take people out. Don't misconstrue as, uh, misconstrued as, uh, what's that guy? Um, I can't think of his name, but y'all stop making fun of that guy, Sh Sh Sherman or something. I can't think of his name. Um, but leave that man alone. Don't come in here making fun of that man with the faces and everything. Y'all have taken it too far. But anyway, um, so yeah, uh, yeah, so, um. I will still say over and over and over and over again that the answer to this, to each individual's walk, is to seek to be led by the Holy Spirit, which is to seek to hear the voice of God, that we must pray earnestly. If you're not hearing the voice of God, um, then you need to pray about that and eradicate the sin in your life so things can get clear, fast and pray. And seek to hear God's voice. That is the answer. That is the answer. That is the the new covenant. No longer do we have to have a priest to uh, go to and say, can you talk to God for me? Now, because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we have access, which is, which is the good news, which is amazing. Now we have access to have conversations through prayer, through Jesus Christ, to talk to the most high God. That's amazing to me. So I hope that answers your question. If not, uh, we'll love to try again.